and welcome to the channel again what have we got today it's not an amplifier at first glance you'd think it was but it's actually if we hone in it's a reverb unit these are very rare I don't think I've ever seen one of these before I might have done I've seen one maybe so this is in um, just for a, a pot clean and so it's clean the switches and things, jack sockets, usual stuff, and just to check over. Um, it's a very interesting item, so should make a good video, this one. So let's just have a look what we've got on there. We've got a high and a low. We've got an, um, a gain on there. We've got EQ, um, amount of reverb you want in there. Clean feed, reverb only. The output foot switch on off switch usual things so let's have a look at the back not much to see on the back really you can see it's solid state so we've got the transistors fuse and a couple of jack sockets no idea what those do and something there see if we can hone in on that there i don't know what that's about could be a ground or something maybe uh yeah so the main thing with this so we need to be getting this cracking this open and uh, having a look inside you can see the handle seen better days though he's uh, on his last legs sadly but other than that it seems in fairly good order right let's uh, get it on the bench and get it apart right I've uh, I've got this orange out of its case and this is the power amp section so we, what we're going to do is change these electrolytics and, and the big ones as well. Um, go to town on this a bit because it's quite a nice thing. So we just zoom in and you can see those there. So they are, let's just have a look what they are. We just hone in down there. We can see that they're 4,763 volts. Just about see that there. Bit awkward and then we've got these chaps on here um, and we've got two of those you can see him and him there's a small one over there and then we've got this one here and uh, the orange ones are 470 microfarad at 16 volts and uh, this one here is that's a hundred microfarad. Are they a thousand? No, for, sorry, these are 470 at 16, 100 microfarad at, let's see what that says there, 63. And then this little one here, I think he is 25 microfarad if I remember. And uh, I've ordered the parts for this, and they've arrived. Now I've also ordered the parts for the preamp section, so let's just have a quick look at the preamp section. So you can see we've got another board in, this is the preamp section, if we roll it over you can see there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish capacitors to change on there, and then we've got uh, that gentleman there to change as well. So we'll be having a look, and I forget, I think he's 4,000 microfarad. Well, you can't try getting one of those now. He's now, be, he's going to be 4,700. 1,000 microfarad on there at 25 volts. And you can see that's quite big for, for a 25 volt cap. They're much smaller these days. We've got 250 microfarad there, and that's also at 25 volts. And we've got... Not sure what that one is 47 I think that one and then we've got this chap here which is 2.2 microfarad that one there if I move my finger out of the way so you can see it that's another 47 I think that is there you can hone in on him he's 25 microfarad and then I think these are all 2.2s that there's a bit of an array there sorry there you go there's a bit of an array there so we're going to change all of those so let's have a look at some of the parts that we've got. There we go, have a look at that. 
So there, we've had a bit of an ordering session. Not all these parts are for, are for the orange. Uh, some are for a, a, a solid state marshal. And these um, these two watt metal oxides, they, they are for um, just various projects and things. Um, we bought some of those as well. There, you can see. So lots of things purchased. So these are the caps for the uh, um, for the output stage on the orange. Four thousand seven hundred at sixty three. It's often quite difficult to find these capacitors for the right diameter to go into the brackets, um, but we've managed with those okay. Now these are the capacitors that will be used um, on the preamp stage on that big capacitor, and uh, they're thirty mil wide. The the blue ones are thirty five, so these are thirty notice they're a lot shorter than um, than the older caps so but as long as we get the diameter that should be fine so we've got those and then I've ordered various other capacitors um, and they are a thousand at 63 so we need those for the orange but we need all of these for the orange really a hundred at 100 volts now some of these I've, the, I've ordered the, the higher rated voltage and the reason is is that if you look at some of these capacitors they, they're really tiny now and uh, you, you know I'm always worried that the that the legs won't reach across all of these are radials some of the caps in there are axial um, so I've just bought a selection of, um, of this, the same microfarad but with different voltages so I've got different sizes so I can pick the best of what what I want to go to go in it so with that in hand um, or these in hand uh, we'll make a start of uh, changing one or two components right we've wired these capacitors in and uh, it's been a bit of a palaver so the diodes that were that was in this originally did they looked a bit grubby anyway so we've taken them out but they wouldn't reach from here down to the terminals because those capacitors that we had before were taller so i'm afraid and i i, I never like doing this if i can help it but there's no other way um i've got some of this which is quite substantial and I've cut some short pieces and I've J-hooked and you can, if we hone in, you can see I've J-hooked those and soldered them and I've done that and I've spaced them out to get plenty of air, air around them. You can just move back so you can see. So we space them out, it's got plenty of air around them and they're nice and solid, they won't move. They're all J-hooked and that was that was the only way of doing that really. There's no, we finding any diodes that are that long um, with that when what do we do do we move this start modifying it and it just goes crazy so that is just the easiest way to do that and they are solid as long as the, the j hooked and solid it's um it is there it's perfectly acceptable it's just nice when you get the component that goes from terminal to terminal but in this case not so so they're in and that's done so we're going to turn his attention to this panel now and swap these uh, one two three only four electrolytics there i see so we're just going to swap those four drop the tester on those resistors see if they're okay uh, all reasonably intoler intolerance and job will be a squirrel there is just one thing i want to do though if we look at the soldering on there it's yeah i don't want anybody to think i've left that it's not I've seen worse, but it's not great. So I'm going to tidy that up as well. This, yeah, there's plenty of slack on that wire. So I'm going to have a look at that as well. And the other one's not great either on the other transistor. But not, but not oh, hang on a minute. I thought that was loose then for a moment. No, it's not. So we'll touch those up and just make those look tidier. And uh, then I think what we'll do is we'll test this power supply section this output section and see uh, make sure it all works and then we'll get on to the preamp right got those changed they're all done checked all the resistors they're fine on this side and I've replaced um, there was a this cover this metal chassis uh, 
cover thing which is, is the heat sink for the transistors uh, there was a nut missing off there you can't see it but I put that back on um, clean the fuse holders um, and put new fuses in because they looked a bit on the grabby side so we've done that what else uh, now check the fuse on the back now these look like they're holding these plastic covers on these and if you look there's nuts missing off those both of those missing off those there's one on there and the rest are missing so I've, I've got to try and find some nuts for those quite a lot there to find because they'll be imperial ones not like oh I'll get some m3s out of the drawer but other than that this that's uh, completes the restoration of uh, of this beast unless when we plug it in this we find some transistors that are gone and this did run before so can't see there being any problems there so unless we find anything major now that's finished so we'll move on to the preamp stage next and yeah so I was paced to have a check check around so I was tightening all those bolts those nuts on and replacing the ones that were missing tightening them up this wire appeared now this wire and if you look at it it's got no it's just got a dab of solder on the end of it and if we look in there and look down there you can see the terminals on the transistor and you can see that one of them has no wire on because this because this has just been laid across it and tacked on because it's awkward to get down there and it just couldn't be bothered to do it right but just found that it just fell off literally so that we're hanging on by a thread so we need to cut that back create a nice curl um, and then pop it over the transistor pin the, the terminal and solder it up you can just see that it's in focus there we go right I've just been having a look at this mains this uh, mains cable power cable and you can see here um, and it must be a long time ago but you see it's been burnt um, don't know whether that's with a soldering iron or what but it's obviously a long long time ago um, and it looks like it's beginning to deteriorate a bit here as well I'm not happy with it so I'm going to swap this power cable um, make this 100% so we're putting this power cable in and uh, I looked at the uh, the, the grip tie, um, whatever you to call them, these things that keep stop the cable pulling out. Can't just the 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 name of them eludes me at the moment. And what we've got here is a a bit of a, a mouldy old grommet with a tie wrap around it. And uh, no, so what we've got instead, and I use these, and they're really great. And I'll I'll get I've got that one fitted, but I'll get one out. So I use these as much as I can sometimes I put them in that way if the the protrude too far out um, then what I do I put them in the other way and that leaves that flush up to there but this one we've got plenty of room so and all basically what these do um, if we have a look so we undo that that goes through the chassis into the hole and that's fitted perfectly that hole was massive so that that went just went in perfect. So normally I have to drill those out, and that's been good because I don't like drilling out on vintage uh, equipment. And then that goes through the nut tightens up there. Just see that, and then this comes off, and you can see the cable goes through there. And as you tighten that up, it clamps your cable. And these are bulletproof. Once you tighten them up with a with a decent spanner, um, they don't come out at all. Yeah, so that's what we're using for that that makes that sort of a bit more safe and it looks more professional right that's all complete we've just got the plug to put on so there was a hole here already in the chassis um, so I've utilised it to put the ground on because before that the ground you can just see it was fastened just on the on the transformer and not particularly great that wire I haven't bothered moving it onto here because it only goes onto that ground terminal at the back which will never be used so I've put that on there soldered a lug on there um, 
nice spring washer, nice M4 bolt in there and tighten that up and uh, here's the result and uh, yeah all ready to go we've got a couple of curls on that and then soldered him and uh, yeah we've joined that there J hook that and uh, heat shrinked it tightened all this up that's bulletproof now you could hang that off a building and uh, it wouldn't move it's solid so they're, they're really great for for cable cable ties right so uh, that's it that's just um bring that back a bit so we just look at, just have a look now at the the finished product so uh, yeah we just have oh dear let's have a look that's a bit magnetic they have to be careful with this because if it gets near anything it sucks in and you can see it's quite a tough thing i use this to get the nuts on down the back of the transformer there um so we've got new electrolytics in there, new diodes, new fuses, we've cleaned the fuse holders, uh, we've changed the capacitors on this board, the electrolytics on this board, T checked all the resistors, they're all intolerance, they're all good. Um, I suppose this thing doesn't see a massive amount of voltage being a solid state. And uh, the only thing we have got to check is that mains fuse, there's another fuse on the back for, for all of this but that mains fuse there needs to be checked there was a 13 amp fuse in the plug so that obviously wants changing as well to a three although i have got some twos um you can actually still buy um on the uk plugs there you can see it down there you can actually still buy uh one amp and two amp fuses to go in those and i didn't think you could but i for some reason i typed it in on ebay and up they came in fact if i have a nosy let me just without trying to knock the camera too much if I can remember what happened. there they are holding on those so if we look the proof is in the pudding and there we go and we've got you can see there's two amps and the others are one amp amazingly enough none of them are turned let's just have a look oh dear. there we go and you can see one amp and two amp plug fuses so uh, yes I think we'll put a two amp in there um, Actually, no, I'll put a three amp in, really, because I think, uh, yeah, I'll put a three amp in. After, uh, yeah. But, yeah, we have got those. I do use those on small projects. They're quite handy. You do find the occasional thing uh, where you find no mains fuse on the chassis. So uh, they are great for that because if you can get the if you can get the, the same, you know, same rating of fuse what you'd have on here in the plug, that's all good. But yeah, that's enough of me waffling anyway. So that's completed. And so we're going to move on now and we're going to just hone back there. We're going to move move on and and start the uh, preamp stage. Um, but it's five past one and it's time for my lunch. Right, we'll turn his attention to this preamp now. This preamp section. So we've got quite a few bits to change on this. A few more than we've got on... Um, then we've got on the power amp section. So we've got this capacitor here. And here is 4000 microfarad. At 25 volts. And he's rather large for that. So I've had to order these. More than I've ordered two, but we only need one. And these are 4700 at 50 volts. And that was the smallest one that we could find actually you know they're supposed to be 30 mil um we'll have to check that on bullish prize board but yeah 4750 volts to go in there you see it's a much shorter capacitor uh anything less in voltage and you can't get it fit in the bracket um so we've had these these left to do so we can get these type of capacitors are very hard to get nowadays and let's look over here so we've got this one to change which is um which is um uh, what is that a thousand microfarad at 25 volts and then we've got two two fit uh, a 250 there sorry at 25 volts everything sees be 25 volts on this board they are 47s and we've got plenty of those so 
I'm not sure what voltage they are, but I've got a few of those, so we should be all right. 25 microfarad. And then we've got these small, which we looked at earlier, these 2.2s to change. There, we've got to clean the pots, the jack sockets, usual thing. And uh, just looking there. Not sure what that's about, but yeah. We'll have a look at that. Just a few flakes of uh, strands of wire that somebody's had a bit of a go. It's like they've added that. There, you see, there's something here with these wires that here you can see. We'll just bring this a bit closer. There we go. You can see these wires. I'm not quite sure. It's as if they've added something on at some point and then it's been cut, taken off again, cut off or something. I don't know. But anyway. We'll, we'll start on this bad boy and we'll get rid of him first. We fired this orange reverb up and uh, there's a few issues that I've actually found on this. And uh, the output section is running perfectly. So there's no problems with that. That's running fine. It's this preamp section where a few problems lie. So on here, and you perhaps can't see, it's just off camera, I've got a jumper um, grinding the one side of the game pot. And you can hear we've got signal coming through there. Now that's the clean feed that's coming through there. Just turn. That's the clean feed. If we go on to the reverb, with this, there's a switch on the front. And if I just, just ease back the camera, you can see it says clean feed or reverb. So I flick that. Turn up this, and we don't have anything. If we turn up the, um, if we turn up, turn it back to clean feed and turn up the reverb, you can see we're, we're missing a grand there somewhere. So that's that's the first problem. Now the other problem is, move across to here, you can see. Just about in the corner there, if we hone in, you can see I'm pink, you can hear pink in the background, she's popped in to see us. Now I've got a, a grand, I've grounded this out on the side of the pot, listen when I remove it. You can see the pot doesn't... Um, See when I remove it, it this the pot doesn't grind, go to ground. So there's some issue there as well, although I don't think that's a hundred percent cure. But I was looking, and if we just hone over that paper, just making that camera, that's it. We we'll just remove that. So if we move back to here, and if I find a pointer. So on examining various parts in this amp, look at this. Look at this resistor here. You can see that this is making it go out of focus, but that resistor is broken. And the, you can right there to see there. Can you see the, the end of that? That's snapped. So that that's a, a problem we've got to sort out straight away. And that looks like one of those crummy little half watt or quarter watt resistors that's broken there um, so the first thing I'm going to do is change that and get that running um, as I've said the output section that runs absolutely fine and uh, yes pink we're busy and then there's no food in here so the output section runs fine but this preamp section has still got some problems on there. The reverb doesn't work at all. I did have it working slightly, um, but it was intermittent in and out. And I don't know whether that's these cables because they're a bit thin and weedy or what it is. So there's a few issues to address. So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to sort that and then we'll come back and have a look when we've, when we've repla replaced that broken resistor. Right, I have repaired that resistor and you can see I've put that one watt uh, 22k in there which which belongs in there not putting anything less than one watt in there i don't do those tacky tiny resistors um they're garbage which is probably why it's snapped 
so he's he's up and running and I've, I've got the signal generator out now and I've just got this running off its own steam and you can see now the, the bass and the treble work they didn't work before they were acting very strange so that's why um, but someone has been tinkering with this at some point because if you remember earlier in the video on the jack socket and I've actually removed those there was a couple of wires that had looked like they'd been added on that had been snipped at some time some very thin wire and I think in doing so where they've been messing about with that they've um, they've they've lost the ground on the uh, on the volume pot on the game pot I've now grounded that down to the so grounded it to the chassis before I've now grounded it down to the jack sockets and you can see there and the volume works perfectly so that ground needs to be replaced I've just because I've just got a jumper on it at the moment and that all works fine um, it's a very strange thing this reverb unit because when you, you automatically think reverb unit you think um that it's it's just it's like a giant pedal in other words you plug it between your guitar and your amp in actual fact you do there is an input and an output but this also has its own full amplifier stage and you can plug speakers into the back of it which is what this is running on now so you could actually use, not only is this a reverb unit but you can just use this as an amplifier albeit solid state and I don't know how good it would sound but you can use this as an amp and it's it, by the sound of it it's it's quite loud looking at the transistors that's and I don't I don't know what model those tra what numbers those transistors are and it's and I have got a schematic here and if I just stick that under the camera you can see it it's not a massive schematic um, it seems to be the preamp section not the power amp section in actual fact if we look there we can see um, just a quick look because it's flashing the, the making the camera flicker but that is actually no bearing on this um, on this power supply on this output stage so that's different but that preamp section is the same I think on the from what I've well from what I've looked at so far on the schematic what I've gone through on the tone control and things it appears to be the same now the other issue is the reverb that, that still doesn't work and if we turn this up we've just got this buzzing so that's I'm going to solder that ground onto there and then I'm going to start investigating why the actual reverb itself doesn't work but we're getting somewhere with this now and it, this is, oh, that's a bit strange noise we're getting somewhere with this and again it, it's back down to that same old song someone's been in here and they've been tinkering around that's got broken at some point they've they've disconnected the ground off the volume i don't know what they've been trying to do um and we'll obviously we'll never know that people have these strange ideas but i think we should be able to get this pretty much back to original and sorted out as I say, the power supply is spot on. We ain't got. We don't need to touch that anymore. We've got that cooking. It's just these few issues on here. So I'm going to solder that ground on and remove that jumper lead there. So we've got that volume working, and then we'll turn his attention to why this reverb isn't working. Right, here's where we are with this. So we've got the reverb part of it working now, and uh, very misleading things going on. So, I've got the guitar plugged in, and let's just have a listen to this. So we've got reverb, and reverb only, which sounds like it's playing about three miles up the road. That feeling when you, you come out onto the street and you can hear music somewhere, but you don't know where it is. Well, I think that's how that should be, it's designed that way. But the other problem now this is running on the output stage of that um, of the uh, of its uh, its own output stage. Remember, this is an amplifier as well. But if we now turn up the volume just a little bit more, we'll put it on clean feed. distorted to say the least 
now I've turned the reverb out now there and you can't, can't quite see that on the screen but if I just hone back a bit so we've got the reverb working we've got the EQ working now because remember we got that big you can see that 22k there protruding so he was uh, he was tated incredible amount of gain on this and I only have to turn that up one notch so I kind of get the feeling that that's some kind of mismatch of impedance somewhere there's something going on now if we're in the high socket there now if we move into the low socket we have got a bit of something now we didn't have before. But you can see the volume doesn't work at all. And that's because that's those sockets aren't wired up correctly. And I've checked that on the schematic. One of those resistors is wired up properly and the other one is wired to ground. And if we look on here, sorry about that, but I'm banging the camera. Where are we? If we look here, you can see um, the, the way that they're wired. They go into the same feed off each jack socket. You've got one on each side, 100k, 110k. I need to check the values of those as well. Um, so, yep, a very strange things happening. That feed there going to the foot switch. Um, the output, sorry there, going to the output, that's that's correct. That wire's there. So they haven't removed that. Uh, so yes, very uh, some very strange things going on there. But we need to wire those sockets up correctly. I'm a bit concerned about that distortion. I think what I'm going to do is run it through another amplifier and see if we've still got that distortion um and try and get some idea of what's what's causing that so there's quite a few problems with with this uh, unit still and um, we are making progress but there is quite a few problems and if if we turn down the reverb now i've got the guitar plugged into it if we turn the reverb down and turn the volume up you can see that humming has gone away. Go into the other socket and see if it's still gone away. No, and it's back. Oh dear, this guitar's a bit out of tune. It wasn't when I bought it. But that's a minor issue compared to what's wrong with this. see now that's now we've turned the reverb down we've got quite a clean signal so we know that distortion isn't coming from the output stage the, the power amp let's turn the reverb up Now I've got the guitar turned full up. It's like the guitar's driving that. It's like a mismatch of impedance there. So, hmm. Have they altered the resistors on those inputs? Well, I don't know what's going on there. But something is definitely not right with those input sockets. So we need to sort those out. But we have got the reverb going. And... Uh, we know all this switching's working correctly now, uh, but we've still got some issues to sort out. Right, uh, this is uh, this is turning out to be a bit of a minefield. I'm afraid the Sunday morning tinkerer has uh, 
left um, a wrath <laughs> of mess. So we've managed to clear up most of that. And uh, we've uh, managed to get the high and low sockets working now. They work correctly. The low socket, and it doesn't really make any sense because the, in the end they both go into the same input, which is um, into this um, point one that you can just see there. So both inputs go into that. But I think with the low input having the the hundred k on, um, that's obviously dumbing the signal down a bit. We haven't got as much signal. But in the high socket, it's extremely distorted as soon as you turn the volume up. So I suspect that this gentleman here is blown because it's really, really distorted. Now on this schematic, which you can see there, it says all transistors BC109B with one exception, which is that chappy over there. And uh, I've not got those in here. I've got BC107s in there. But I, I presume that they are a similar transistor. Um, I'm not really familiar with transistors. I have to go and look them up because I don't use them very often. Where somebody was using them regularly, just say, oh yeah, they're interchangeable. So I think the easiest thing, and I am not one for testing transistors. I just swap them all. Because by the time you've done taking each one out, testing it, putting it back in, and sometimes you test them and they test fine and they're still they're still blown, and they cost they, they don't they cost pennies. So I'm just going to change them all, and then I'm going to change them all, and then hopefully that should cure that problem. But the gain, and we just let's just switch it on. So we'll switch on this. I've got we'll switch on the signal generator, and the guitar's distorted through it too. But I've just kind of I kind of gave up with the guitar because there were so many other things wrong with it, the input sockets and various things. So if we switch it on, um, so if you look, and I'm just let me just pull this back a bit. There we go. So we can see if you can see the volume going up. That's on the low. And we've got a very strange background noise on that now that could be because we've got it out the, the case um, so if we just but now listen what happens when we go into the high and, and the gain is completely off now on the signal generator you can see this this we've got a tremendous high gain there so something's not right with that um, so we're going to need to take a look at that I'll just switch that off there we go so let's just look at what we fixed in this uh, major project let's find a point of some description did have one somewhere you can never find them when you want them. But this desk is getting a bit, this bench is getting a bit messy. There's a pencil, that'll do nicely. So, obviously we've recapped this, and we've, we've been through all that before. But we have cured quite a lot of faults. So, one fault is this 22K resistor was broken. And it was one of those weedy 8th watt things, or quarter watt ones I don't know but anyway we've, we've repaired that and that got the, the EQ going and then if you look down there sorry down the, um, where are we if we look down there you can see there's a hundred you can't see it but it's a hundred K resistor so we, we, we've it wired that up correctly because that wasn't wired up properly um, that hundred K resistor were wired to ground no idea why so we've cured that one. So all the, the so the high and low the high and low inputs are now working. What else have we cured? So the um, 
the reverb's working properly now. We've got that working. And that was a wire that had, had come off. And you, you can't see it, but down there somewhere, there was, there was a wire that had, had come away. So we got that back on. So all in all now, this this is functioning as it should function, except it has that, oh, that fault there with the distortion and the massive amount of gain. So I'm suspecting that is a transistor. So I think what I'm going to do now is declare this part one because the, this video is going on quite a bit. And I think part two will come back and look at a, a full transistor change on this board. The output section, which is over here, we just spin round. You can just about see him there. You can see him there. He's fine. There's no problems with him. Um, but this preamp is still a bit of a mess. So I think a full transistor change on there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go off now. Um, look for some of these transistors and uh, get them on order, and so we can get this finally get this off the bench and get get it complete. Um, I'm a bit disappointed there after sorting all those faults out. That you know they've missed wirings, which is which is they're not really faults as a, a blown component. It's just someone's been in here and messed about with the wiring I'm lucky to find the schematic really uh, so but we've got a fault and we, we need to sort that out so we're going to leave this one here so thanks for watching um, this one's been a bit of a strange one and I'll see you all in another video and that will probably be part two of this no doubt um, so you all take care and bye bye for now